Welcome back. Speaker Kevin McCarthy is defending his decision to direct House committees to open a formal impeachment inquiry into President Biden. Now, House Republicans have been investigating Hunter Biden in relation to the president, but so far haven't uncovered any evidence of wrongdoing. But Speaker McCarthy says this probe is essential for finding answers. We don't have any of the credit card statements from all the credit cards from this um, shell companies. We don't have the president's bank statements. We don't have Hunter Biden's bank statements. Providing information like that would answer the question. All we're looking at in an impeachment inquiry is answering the question. CBS News congressional correspondent Scott McFarlane joins us now from Capitol Hill with more on this. Uh, Scott, the one thing Speaker McCarthy also doesn't have is a full House vote on this impeachment. He unilaterally launches this after previously saying an impeachment inquiry requires a full House vote. And apparently he's defending his change of course by pointing to former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and saying she changed precedent. Help us understand what's really going on here. Yeah, what the speaker is arguing is that this impeachment inquiry gives the U.S. House more leverage and more capability to do the investigation it wants to do into Hunter Biden, his business dealings, any foreign influence peddling alleged in the case, and any connections that has to the president or the Biden family overall. The House has been investigating that for nine months through three of its committees. This impeachment inquiry, Republicans argue, gives those committees a little more heft to issue subpoenas, get witnesses, and get records. Democrats in the White House argue just the opposite, that nine months of investigating has found no evidence of misconduct or crimes, and that those committees could have issued the subpoenas anyhow, whether or not there was an impeachment inquiry launched. And they do argue, quite unambiguously, Errol, that this lacks legitimacy because it didn't have a full vote in the U.S. House. And that much is very much true. It is not getting a full vote in the House today and won't get one in the coming days, according to members who met with McCarthy this morning. Mm. And you wonder how that might impact future elections for those Republicans in swing districts that, that Biden won in the last election. Um, we're also counting down, as this takes place, to a potential government shutdown. The gridlock, as is ever the story in the House, seems to be getting worse today. What's happening on that front, Scott? There was supposed to be a vote tonight on a $900 billion plan to fund the military, which is usually the easiest thing for government to agree to fund. The Department of Defense, the troops, service members, munitions and war plans. They pulled the vote out of the House floor plan for today when the afternoon began. There will no longer be a vote on this plan to fund the military because it looks like they don't have the votes to pass it in the U.S. House. That's how fractured the U.S. House is right now, uh, the prospect of a government shutdown just 18 days away. They cannot pass some of these easier appropriations bills when the harder ones that are usually more contentious come down the pike likely won't have much better luck. That's why, Errol, a government shutdown seems not just possible but increasingly likely as September 30th, the deadline, approaches. Yeah, I see the warning sign flashing behind you. All right, Scott McFarlane on Capitol Hill. We appreciate it. Thank you very much.